So, we've had a little delay, had some fun things we had to go take care of in Kansas, but we are back. And I wanted to give you a shot of with the decking all down. Still have a few screws to put in back here. But it has been foamed and it's, we put insulation under the floor. This end of it has all been screwed down. And today we picked up all of the wood to start building the walls. And he's once again checking level on everything. <laughs> Tomorrow will be a full day of building. Pretty excited to get this started. See how this all transpires. So, ask us questions. We'll be happy to see if we can get them all answered for you and figure out exactly what would you guys like? Or how would you do something? Just let us know. Okay, talk to you soon. As you can see, we are attaching the decking to the trailer itself. This metal was extremely hard and that had to be drilled out um, so that the screws would go in and they didn't strip out. So this was a process. We used a lot of screws, but the decking is very secure now and it'll be a good surface to live on and build on. As you can see, he is beginning to lay out the walls um, and we are trying to make sure that we follow our blueprint that we had as best as possible. This process, we did have to make a couple of changes and um, he's just a really good carpenter at this point in time in his life and he can make those changes on the fly. I, on the other hand, struggle with that, but he's really good at it. So you can watch him lay these walls out um, he basically lays them out on one board and then he transfers it to the other board as you can see him marking on there and you'll be able to see at the end how all of this lines up exactly how it needs to and he attaches everything with screws in this process and he uses a 2 by 6 wall that he's building for the front door here. I'm sure some of you are wondering, what is he building? He likes to have everything level. Remember that from all the levels stuff before? He is just making basically his own little stands so that when he goes to cut the lumber, it's level and he can make nice straight cuts. As you can see me in the background, I'm scraping off the fender wells. When the bottom of the trailer was spray foamed, there was some overspray that got on those and we are gonna cover those with the sill plate material so when the walls are stood up, um, they have no metal touching wood. So I was cleaning those off to make sure that they were ready to have that particular sill plate material. It's the pink stuff that you can see around the trailer. You can have it on top of the metal so that it is not touching the wood that we will put on those window wheel wells.
As you can see him laying out these walls or the beginnings of this first wall, you notice how many times he measures. And then he goes back and he makes sure it's exactly square on the end. And then he measures it again. He wants to make sure that he gets exactly everything laid out perfect. So when you go to put your windows in, you go to put your doors in, everything fits exactly like it should. And you're not off a half an inch. And it takes a lot of time, extra time in the end to fix something like that. So as you watch him lay these walls out and you watch him cut, he is making sure that every single piece of this wall is lined up exactly like he needs it and making exact cuts on everything. When he tells you a cut, he means exactly what he said. see he has his own form of a pencil sharpener as well as he was doing his cuts and he is now laying out the studs for this particular wall he wants to make sure that everything is exactly square you see him using his square then he marks the studs he marks the jack studs he marks the king studs he marks where the window openings are going to be then as you can see he's transferring it right onto the top board at the same time as he's marking it on the bottom board. So when you go to lay your wall out, everything should be exactly square if you line up within the lines. see we're having a discussion here we're just making sure that all of our openings for the doors are exactly what we had laid out and making sure that we have room for our switches making sure that there's enough room to get the refrigerator open all of those good things that you don't really think about a lot of times in the beginning of the process but when you get at the end and you run into a problem we're trying to foresee that kind of stuff here so he's making sure that everything gets laid out exactly like he knows he needs it to be able to get everything inside of that wall in that space because that's actually also where the mini split um, wires, uh, tubes will go down the wall right there. So he wants to make sure that he has enough room for everything when he was laying out this, when he was putting all the studs in as well as the king studs and the jack studs.
walking down his tape measure. What he's doing is he's marking where the actual studs go every 16 inches on this wall. So then when he comes back in, then he will be able to place his regular studs along with the jack stud studs and the king studs in the appropriate places. But he also wants to make sure that you get the right amount of studs every 16 inches. So if you ever have to remodel, you know that there was studs there every 16 inches. There may be more, but you at least know that every 16 inches you're going to find a stud. He is starting to cut all of the studs for the wall. And as you can see, after he cuts them, he kind of throws them out there on top of the header and the, and the base plate. He's doing that just to get a good idea of where he's at in the process of cutting. So he goes through and he cuts all of his studs first, and then he kind of lays them out in somewhat of a wall look. And then he comes back in after he has everything cut and screws it all together. As you can watch him, he will count, he will come along and he will try to make sure that he has everything that he needs in his process so that when he starts the process of putting it actually together it's all all the pieces are there it's just like a big puzzle almost ready to start assembling this wall we will take the top plate to the other side of the trailer and then we will start by affixing the studs to the base plate that we left here on this side of the trailer it's kind of heavy this is a big wall two by six walls are heavy studs. Um, he is checking for crown on those boards. Carpenter thing, I guess. But if you look at a board, you can see where they are cupped. And he always likes to put that cup side on the upside. So when you are building the wall, that that gets straightened out as you come through the process and it keeps everything straight or both sides of the wall become very straight in the process. You can see how we've laid out the studs. Now we're gonna take this base plate and we're gonna flop it up against the bottom and he will begin to start screwing all of those studs into that base plate. He has decided to use screws on this job because the house is movable and we do have big doors in this and big windows and he wanted to make sure that he did as much as he possibly could to help with the structural integrity of the walls and of the tiny house. As you can see, he's fastening each one of those boards together with screws. He likes the idea of using screws in this process just because the tiny house is movable, like I said before. And it does take longer to do it this way, but when you're building your own house, 
this is something that he definitely feels like is an important piece of this since it is movable and he wants to make sure that structurally it's as stout as he can make it. sure some of you are wondering how many screws is he putting in each one of these studs so each stud gets three screws and then if they are sandwiched together with a king stud or a jack stud then he goes back in and he puts in about every 12 inches he is screwing those together which is probably more than he needs to do however that's what he's chosen to do because this is our house and he wants to make it as safe as possible for us As you can see we've now put the top plate against the wall and we are preparing to fasten all of that down on the top as well and make sure that we have everything lined up like we want it and it's getting cold outside so we are hoping to be done pretty soon in our process today was a good day and he's going to give you an overview in a few minutes that will kind of explain a little bit more in detail of what he's done throughout this day step in the process uh, we talked about the pink stuff before being put on the um, wheel wells we also put that pink on the bottom of the wall itself as a protective membrane um, against the wood this is done on most construction projects when you set a wall up you always put that vapor barrier kind of down um, to help keep out any moisture that would get close to the wall we actually use some Gorilla Glue uh, spray Gorilla Glue and we just set it right <laughs> onto the wood and we slapped it on there Use a little knife to cut it apart worked like a charm Okay, pretty good day today Started framing some walls We uh, made this first wall around the front door out of two by sixes because of two things one we wanted to have a little better header because it's such a big front door, eight foot by eight foot. Two, we have a uh, mini split unit going on this wall. And we wanted to have room to run the lines in the wall so that we don't have anything on the surface, keep everything neat and clean. So as you can see, I don't have any headers yet. I put the framing up there but uh, I've got to get the header material. I'm using LVLs instead of two buys and OSB stacking. The LVLs, you can use a smaller width. A five and a quarter LVL will build the same header as a two by eight, which is seven and a quarter. So they're a little heavier and more dense, but they give you a little better headroom usage above windows and doors. And I like them because they're usually straight. You don't have to worry about the curves and cups like you do in regular uh, construction lumber. So, got king studs, jack studs besides the doors, going up to the top. Um, you can see the window opening over here that's up. We got the trimmer stud underneath it, jack stud for the header beside it, the king stud beside that. So, Everything that we've got will transfer all of the load from the roof straight down to the foundation. Not through any doors or through any windows. It'll all be directed right down to the ground. So, finished screwing all of our decking down today. We were short on screws. Um, all of these are tapped right into the steel cross members. 
So there is the, you can see the pink uh, foam that we put in there. It's standard sill plate foam. We put that between all of the metal and all of, all of the wood. There's no wood touching any metal. Uh, that controls any condensation that would happen to come through transfer of the metal. So we cover all of the metal up with that to keep any moisture from damaging any of the lumber. So our plumbing lines come from here, go all the way to the kitchen. The three inch drop in the middle back there is where all of the plumbing from this deck, the deck that we have not built yet, will be flush with the top of these fenders all the way across, all the way back. And in below that deck will be some storage in a closet area here. And then in the area coming in from the uh, living room, there'll be a slide out bed. But actually, once this is built, you'll see there'll be a deck here. And then the queen size bed will slide out from underneath that for all of our guests. So it'll be tucked away and hidden. So just cool little features that we're working on. Um, yeah, pretty good day. Beautiful Colorado sunset. sunset. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you can get all the updates as we continue the tiny house build. Thanks for joining us.